Um, I think I'm gonna head to the castle of L Lamar next here. Yeah, let's do it. The castle by the sea that had once looked abandoned now looked like it had been lived in for ages. Windows were alight, the grounds were well kept, and the architecture had been repaired. The infamous castle of Namar has been reoccupied. I don't understand. There ain't supposed to be any lords here. Why not? The people of this land were once massacred, and in their death, their bitterness cursed this land. No crops will grow, no good animal will tread it, and caravans that pass through are never seen again. Every attempt to live in the castle has ended with the untimely death of the inhabitants. It's haunted! It's plagued with vampires. This isn't the first time the Amazons have had to get rid of them. The souls of the murdered continue to find no rest. May peace finally come to those who lost their lives here. They're always at peace. You're just a party crasher now. Let's hurry. They have our Amazon sisters. They closed in on the sinister castle. The sky darkened and the wind stopped. I don't like it here. Falling dust pulled their attention to the top of an archway. High above them, they saw winged grotesque crackling to life as they had not moved in hundreds of years. Gargoyles protecting the castle from intruders. Prepare yourselves. That's not all. More protectors of the castle emerged, and this time it was a pack of inferno hounds. Their growls weren't warning, but signals of their attacks. Watch out! The hounds and the gargoyles descended upon the group almost at the same time. Let's go! Lauren, Saren! I know Apollo Mesho is a little lower in level. I know Murr is a little lower in level. Um, I think I'm gonna have to go Souser And Amukiki. And 300. Promise? 300. Hmm. Let's do it. Ay, 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 Fucking hell! They murdered those guys really fucking fast! I thought I had a good shot here, but wow! I'm sorry. Holy shit! Okay, we gotta take out this guy like now. We gotta drop these hellhounds as quickly as we can. I'm gonna try to revive you. Ah! Ah! Okay. Heal everyone with your nature's touch. Holy fucking shit, this is a hard fight. All right, I got this, I can do this. I, I got this, totally, I got this. There's one down, ow, ow, ow. Shit, I can't even fucking do anything for this guy. And he's dead, again. Wow. I cannot even fucking keep this guy alive. I can't... I can't explain why I let you fall, because you keep fucking falling! Come on. Drop him. There we go. Um... Anybody alive here? Holy shit, these guys are gonna be annoying to deal with. Yeah. One down. Um, hail. Give 
them a proper belief. Oh my god, we it's managed to beat them. To ah! What the fuck? Ah! What the fuck? Ah! The gargoyles crumbled into lifeless rubble. Lauren swiped her blade masterfully at the final hound in her way. Why won't you die? The hound was still standing its ground against all odds. I know those eyes. That beast is fighting for someone besides itself. Karen had to close her eyes suddenly to keep from seeing Lauren's blade make its final strike. It's dead now. Some looked down at the hound, as if they regretted that it had to die after fighting so valiantly. Others, such as Lauren, thought nothing of it. But in the silence, they all heard the whimpering of a hound. They froze and turned back around. An inferno hound that they had all thought long dead whimpered louder and stood up. It clawed its way over to the resisting hound that Lauren had just skewered. It was almost impossible not to be moved by how the beast sniffed and whimpered over the dead hound's body, as if it was capable of feeling like them. The morning hound then howled loudly up in the sky, the voices of each of its heads creating a piercing symphony. That poor thing. Did we kill it, sweetie? No, it is a juvenile. His parent. Karen stepped towards the hound, but Lauren stopped her. Mother! Would you rather give it the quick death it deserves? Kill it! After we come in here and kill its mommy, our apology is to kill it? Lauren was tight-lipped as Draco stormed past Karen. Draco! The hound stopped howling and jumped back, growling at Draco. Dummy, come back here! I can snipe it from here, no worries. Good doggy, I won't hurt you. Be careful! Draco pulled out a meat from inside of his robe and tossed it at the growling hound. It stopped and sniffed it suspiciously. And then it licked it once, twice. See, no harm done, I'm a nice one. The Inferno Hound ripped at the meat with all three of its heads, sharing it equally amongst the mouths. When it was done, it pounced Draco, everyone gasped. Saren ran up his blade drawn and Lauren not falling behind. They quickly realized the hound was not attacking Draco, however, only sniffing him for more food. Whoa! Not there! That tickles! What are you doing? I think I have a new pet! An inferno hound? A pet? Why not? Because he'll eat you in your sleep! They are the demon's allies. The hound didn't attack or growl at anyone. Its three sets of eyes were stuck on Draco. Nah, he's fine! I cannot find it in me to kill this hound's child. We should let it live. Fine, but we're not keeping it. It is no one's pet. Entertaining an inferno hound is only asking for trouble. You're my little trouble, aren't you? Aren't you? Lauren crinkled her nose. Saren, you tell him to get rid of it. I'm keeping the goddamn hound. I like it. It sounds awesome. Do I have any passives? I do have a passive. Boom. Toughness, toughness, toughness. Firebrand, huh? Single target. Hmm. Huh. You can go for armor skin. Poison fangs, and I'll get fire breath level two. All right, let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Booyah! Actually, wait, no. Take away two and make those tens. Yeah, let's go like that. For a little bit. Finished! I have no problem with Draco keeping it as a pet. What? Wonderful, another creature saved from the darkness. 
Animalist, adopt trouble. <laughs> Mirth approached the dog and pet its middle head. Its tail began to wag and the other heads pushed the middle out of the way, fighting for Mirth's attention. We don't need dead weight. If that mutt's recognized Draco as its new owner, you won't have to worry about that. It'll fight alongside us. We are its new pack. I'll kill it if it gets out of line. The same as you, Draco. Draco waited for Lauren to leave to bend down and whisper to the hound. Don't worry, Trouble. She's all back. Draco let the hound inside the castle walls and it obediently followed. Trouble became a loyal servant for Lauren and her friends. It needed a pack to survive and Draco was willing to adopt it. Though it was a wild beast that needed domestication in many aspects, its untamed spirit turned it into a formidable ally on the battlefield. They approached the entrance to the castle and saw that it was covered in cobwebs and more dusty gargoyles. The tall windows, however, were lit as if the castle was lived in. Lauren took out her sword and moved toward the giant doors. Do not storm the front. They will be expecting that. We are stronger, and it is the easiest way. Yes, why not? There isn't a fight too difficult for me. Have you ever met a vampire? Let's not be foolhardy. They have dark magic on their side. Saren, what do you think? We should find another way. Vampires are too strong and too clever for us to play by their own game. We need to play by our rules. Then we find another way inside. What do you figure? I remember. My mother spoke of a secret passageway. Perhaps there was one on the perimeter. I'll begin scouting. They all carefully approached the castle and inspected the exterior for hidden doors. They found a cellar door, and with a quick bash of Ramus's axe, the lock was history. The cellar door opened with a dusty creak. I do not know where this leads or what will be down there. Everyone should remain vigilant. The walk down into the dark darkness in a single file. The group found themselves in a more of a cave than a room. This must be a passageway to the catacombs under Namar. We can get to the castle from here. I am certain of it. I suspect the caves form a labyrinth of twists and turns that will be infested with undead. We should consider splitting up into two parties to double our chances of finding a way into the castle. I will attempt to use our, my divination to show us the path, so I will lead one group. And I will use my own powers to lead a second group. Very well. I will lead one of the two teams while Saren will lead the other. Saren, decide who will join you. I trust your decision. You can now select who will be your... Who will be in your group between Mirth and Apollomesho? The other one won't be available for the whole exploration, so choose wisely. Uh, I better pick Mirth then, but let's save. Boink. Cool. I'm gonna pick Mirth. Boink. Now select six party members that will be part of your group. Review your party setup before proceeding. So, Mirth is here, and Saren is here. Hmm. And without Lauren, I need a couple of strong guys. Let's get Salzer in there. Can we get Amukiki? Yeah. And then I'm gonna need two more people. Two more. I'll leave Draco for Lauren's group, I think. Uh, Shambara and Karen. Let's give it a try. Hey, this is RPG at Will. I hope you liked this episode of Lore and the Amazon Princess. If you want to check out some of my other material, you can click on my channel link below, or you can even subscribe if you'd like. I like to do some silly songs on the side, along with my RPG work. If you want to see some more group-oriented stuff, there's another channel called Gaming Idiots TV that I take part in. That's where we do all our group stuff, so I'll provide a link below if you want to check it out there. See you next time.